Good afternoon, Metal Gear Army. Going to talk about glass bedding rifles today. Uh, the main three reasons to glass bed your rifle is for strength, accuracy, and cosmetics. Cosmetics for if somebody's been chewing on your stock or the action doesn't quite fit, there's some big gaps on it, kind of seems unsightly. You can use glass bedding to fill that in for a cosmetic reason. Um, accuracy, you are going to eliminate all movement of the action in the stock. And that's going to help give you better accuracy. It's also going to keep the vibration, uh, the harmonics of the, of the barrel vibrating down up to this point right here. Once it leaves here, it's going to start to come back. But up to this point, you've deadened it, which greatly improves accuracy. Strength. Um, for all the little voids and pockets that your rifle has, like I said, all that dead space that will allow the, the stock to flex, whether you have a wooden one or a synthetic one, um, it will cure a lot of that. This stuff's pretty hard, um, and it's, it's meant for that reason, to take that pressure. <clears throat> the rifle we're glass bedding today is a 300 Win Mag. Again, uh, not to beat a dead horse, but guy showed up here at the shop. One of my competitors told him they'd have to send this rifle out, and they claim to be the only full-service gunsmith in Columbus. But they had to send this out. Not sure if that's false advertisement, or or if they just want you to bring you bring them, you know, your guns and send them out to some other guy to work on. And I don't know why that would be a good business practice, but that's what they have. So he brought them to us, and then we're going to glass bed this up for him. Now I follow Gene Shuey's practices. He's internationally known for his 1911s and his high-end rifles that he builds. Um, I studied from him on his glass bedding techniques and memorized all his tips and tricks um, to, to try to do him proud and, and to give you guys the best high-end glass bedding job that, that you can have. There's, this isn't going to look bad when we're done. It's going to be perfect. And So what we've already started to do is... And I'll include some pictures, as always, at the end of the video, um, some different aspects of this job that we're doing. There are some holes here on the side of the stock that uh, just were there for decoration. Um, they did go all the way through. The customer wanted them there. Um, I told him when we glass bed the rifle, we really couldn't leave it straight see-through so we've come up with an idea to help him with that the barreled action is a satin color just like this stainless steel like a polished or a brushed if you will and so I did that same thing with some stainless steel and a couple pieces of metal here I've, I've installed into the stock uh, they look exactly like the barrel without this tape on here you put the barreled action in you'd swear you're looking at the barrel but you're not so it's an illusion that nobody will know that's there other than us and the customer. Second off, uh, we had a huge hole in here that we had to fill in, as well as I put these supports in to help pin the metal up against the sides of the stock so that the glass bedding doesn't leak in behind that. That would be a pretty bad thing if that happened. It would ruin the finish of this laminated stock, and it's a beautiful stock, as you can see on the back end here. Well, maybe not so much in this video, but... It's a beautiful stock. Um, we you go ahead and channeled out this area here for the uh, recoil lug. Not the back area that the recoil lug will be using, but the front area. We do that for a couple of reasons when we glass bed so that any glass bedding in here has a way out and doesn't trap a pocket and create an issue. Uh, also, it's, it's, it won't give us a jam up when we go to stick this together. You have to completely degrease the inside of it. You have to inlet anywhere <clears throat> that it isn't <clears throat> a minimum of 1 30 seconds um, to a 16th of an inch away from the barrel action. So wherever it's rubbing or touching, you need to, to polish that away and brush that away and leaving the wood rough for the glass bedding material has something to adhere to. Obviously, I've done a lot of work already. I didn't want to bore you guys with some of the... the painstake work plus I don't know how to fast forward do a video yet and speed up my actions so I, I just omitted that part of it you want to completely tape around everywhere on your on the line this is going to be your line just like we're painting with cars or painting anything uh, your tape is your line 
So if your tape's off, your line's going to be off. And what you're going for on a cosmetic angle is you want it to look like the metal, the wood is grown directly onto the metal. They are one piece. And that's what we're going to have when we're done. On top of that, you have to completely disassemble the barrel to action. And I mean completely. Uh, you have to plug all the holes. You see I've got plumber's putty in here. You can use clay, play-doh, whatever. Um, you need to plug these holes so that the glass doesn't get down in there. This is for the trigger assembly. There's two more up here in the front for sling swivel studs that I'll have to drill out and put the studs back in later once we've glass bedded this whole action. And then you need to degrease it. You can use the degreaser that comes with the kit. There's just enough in here to do the whole job once, I feel, because I overdo things. They probably say you don't have to use as much as I do, but I really find that if you can get this stuff to release where you don't want it to stick and stay where you do want it to stick it makes the job really nice it gives a nice sharp clean edges it breaks where you want it to break and it sticks where you need it to stick so you can put some pressure on it after I apply all that I'll go ahead and that's to the stock here on the tape as well I'll go ahead and use some of this aerosol release from Brownells uh, and just spray over the barrel action that I have behind me here in a vice drying uh, once again, I let that dry just to triple check and make sure. Uh, I guard against mechanical locks. That's where the uh, glass bedding will ooze up over top of something metal that has to come straight out. And so you'll have to break that edge off to get the barrel to action out. Once you do this, they are super snug to get out, and they should be. I mean, right now, if you take the screws out, you can just take it apart. But once I get done, it's going to take a hand and a thumb and your finger in the back of the action and a, there's, it should have a vacuum seal to it when I'm done and that's a good 100% contact that's going to be super accurate super strong it's going to look awesome and that's what we want to give to this guy he's a big game hunter it's a 300 wind mag uh, a lot of pressure large boom so the glass bedding is going to help out a whole bunch here as I've elaborated we've etched out here I did do a little removal back here. You want to drop this back just a little bit in the tang where it gets sloppy back here. This is where they'll tend to crack when that action moves back in the stock. So you want to glass bed a little bit there as well as right here to give it that, hold it forwards. You want to spray release agent on your magazine as well as the trap underneath. And I've already installed the trigger guard. Uh, that way when I set the screws in and I screw them down, for the glass bed to set, uh, you know, I won't have to fumble with any of this stuff. I'm holding it in with tape right now. Word on that, when you stick these in, dip them in Vaseline, Vaseline right here. Uh, coat these up real good with Vaseline and or release agent, either or, just make sure you do it. Because if these get stuck in there, you're going to run into big problems. You can't get your gun back apart. <laughs> big problems. So we'll take extra special care to make sure those are good and greased up before we, we assemble the two. I think we're pretty much ready to attempt it. I'm going to go ahead and mix these two together in front of you so you know the process. Uh, we'll add our color and try to be as consistent to the stock as it is. This is a brown mouse air glass. Uh, I have the correct container right here. I use this container. This is the one that I use. It's the green box. Works the best. Has the most. Does really well for these kinds of jobs. You can get, if you're just going to do a two-point bed, this from Brownells. Again, it's air glass. It doesn't have as much. It comes with one resin and a container of hardener and a couple of mixing cups, and that's about it. And that's going to be more of a two-point bedding job instead of a full bedding job like we're going to do right now. Or maybe even if you were going to float the barrel and then two-point bed it, that would be the red box. Anything else, you want the most glass that you can get, buy the gel, buy the green box. This is good stuff. To elaborate a little bit on that, for a two-point bed, you're basically going to bed just the recoil lug. And back here where the action sets and engages the stock, and you're going to float the barrel. You're only going to do that if your bench 
bench shooting. If you are planning on going out in the woods and big game hunting like this guy, don't float your barrel. That's a big no-no. If you're going to glass bed it, glass bed it. Pressure bed it is what I do. And I'll explain that in a moment. But don't float the barrel and then take it out to the woods. Why? Because of pine needles and anything else that can get between the barrel and the action is going to throw the accuracy off. And you've left a big gap there for it. That's why you don't take ported barrels and, and uh, slide lightning cut modified pistols into the field. There are too many holes for dirt and rocks to get into. Don't want that. You want a closed system. Keep all the trash out as you can. So we're going to full glass bed this one because he takes it out into the woods. If you were going to bench shoot or you're a thousand yard shooter, you got your bipod and you're not worried about dust and, and, and debris and pine needles and leaves getting in there possibly, uh, then yeah, go ahead and float it because you're just working with the harmonics of the barrel and you're trying to make that as true as possible. Uh, plus, it looks kind of cool to have a floated barrel. I know all, uh, a lot of AR-15s try to get that floated barrel effect, so there's nothing pulling on it for accuracy. But for a field rifle, if you're hunting, you want a full glass bed, as I've said several times. Now, to pressure bed, once I lay the glass in here and I install the action, I'm going to flip this upside down and out at the very end of the barrel I'm gonna put some tape and I'm gonna put roughly four to five pounds of weight with this upside down and what that's gonna do is that is just ever so slightly against the screws and the fatigue stress of the metal is gonna lift that up just a little bit and allow a little bit more glass to pull underneath here again this whole thing's gonna be upside down so that it's gonna to try to follow gravity and you're gonna create just a little bit of a gap in there by putting weight on that barrel away from the stock and what that does is as I said <clears throat> barrel harmonics as you fire this big old 300 wind mag you get one of these with your barrel the larger the round the more it happens you want to cut that down as much as you can you can only cut it down to where the stock ends if you had a longer stock you could do better but since it ends here that's where the, the the advantages of glass bedding will end as well. But you're going to stop all that and putting a pressure bed on it helps take it out past the barrel because now it's under pressure already. So when it hits that point, it's almost like a heat sink. Even if it tries to flex after it leaves the stock, it's going to try not to because it has that pressure bed on it. It has a slight bit of tension or a buffer, if you will. It's not rubber, it's it's a glass bedding material, but it's a buffer, if you will, to extend the, the harmonic advantages of the glass bedding past the end of the stock. If you just regular glass bed it, the vibration, just very little bit, is going to be um, left here, but it's going to pick back up after. If you pressure bed, you're going to be able to extend the advantages of your glass bedding past the end of the stock and, and pick up more, even more accuracy. So with that being said, I'm going to check my barreled action over here and see if she's dry. If she's dry, I'm going to come back and mix this for you so you can see how it's done. And then we're going to put it into this stock and then I'm going to put the action in this stock and show you how that's done. And then we'll come back in a few hours when it's time to crack everything loose and check everything, okay? Be right back. Okie dokie. I checked the action and everything seems to be dry. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up and apply it to the stock with the color in it best as close we can. And then we're going to assemble the two. And before I start doing that, I'm going to go ahead and dip my action screws. Take the two main screws. Hold it together. There's another one in the in the middle, but we're not going to try to worry about that one right at the moment. Main two that are going to help me put the action together, front and rear. So we'll go ahead and take them and dip them directly. Push them right into the Vaseline. Just push them in there. Get a hold of him. Pull him back out. I've already done the other one laying there. Okay. Yourself a paper towel so you can stay cleaned up. Vaseline gets everywhere. But for this job, messy with this stuff's okay. Alright. 
right, let's go ahead and mix this. Here's the resin. Now you're going to judge <clears throat> about how much. You see, you got two of these. Okay, there's two ounces each. I'm believing. Yes, two full ounces each. You got four ounces if you mix this whole thing together at one time. You don't want to do that. <laughs> it's pretty easy to mix the two and get the color about the same if you have to add. You want to try to get this right the first time. But you need to think, there's a small gap here. It's going to take materials, a large pocket here I'm going to have to fill. There's another pocket there I'm going to have to fill. Pretty large pocket here I'm going to have to fill some gaps, some spaces back here plus this. So I'm going to need probably a little over half of this and it's okay to be more than less. You want to be more safe than sorry. So you only want to try to do this the one time. So if you feel safe about it, go ahead and mix the whole thing. But if you don't need to, don't. We're going to mix about three quarters of each one of these and that should give me enough to inlay this stock pretty well. As I'm mixing it up, the two, I'll be able to know by the quantity that's there if it's going to fit here or not. But I've done a couple of these synthetic stocks also, and they require a lot more of this stuff than usual. So I, I think about three quarters of each one of these would be okay. So let's try. Stick. Add this in here just like this. Now, you go to add the other, you go to put your hardener in here. I'm going to do a little bit more. About three quarters of this. I want. Probably just to clean up the sides. Just, just a little bit. Almost all of it. Seven eighths of it, anyways. Three quarters, if you want to get real close to it. Now for the hardener. Now, once you mix this, your magic starts to happen. So, you don't want to be messing around. You've got a little bit of time, but you don't want to fool around for too long. Now, when I break this one out of here, I'm going to use the other side of the bowl so that I can judge between the empty container, there's the two empty containers, and the bowl to make sure there's about the same amount left in each one and about the same amount in this one. stuff reminds you of Vaseline or a real warm caramel caramel however you say it the sweet stuff you put on apples just a little bit more here very important that you get this equal like I said this is adding strength and accuracy to your rifle as well as cosmetics but we're more focused on strength and accuracy and we want the mix to be good we want the whole thing to set up right now pretty equal parts pretty equal parts there I think I'm happy with that Let's put the lid on these now one thing you don't want to do <clears throat> and I know because I've done it is you don't want to power blend this you don't want to whip up a little uh, a contraption for your drill and try to blend these two together. It's not going to work. It will. It's going to work too good. This stuff will start to set up in the cup before you've had a chance to apply it. So mix it with the stick manually. Get it like a big chocolate swirly going and then you can mix it. Make sure you're raking it off the sides. As you mix this to a pretty even consistency, you're going to notice it start to one warm up and two thin up. It's going to become uh, very runny. Make 
chair. You're starting to get there. And remember I said about raking your sides. There will be unmixed hardener and resin on the sides. So make sure you're raking that off there pretty frequently in order to get a good consistent mix here. Stir us a little bit more. Try not to break your stick. I'm about to. Try to get it all off the sides and in the middle. Okay. Let's go ahead and add our color. Now the trick with this color is go slow. This thing will turn dark brown quick, fast, and in a hurry. So let's go. One drop. Two drops. Two drops. Just off of two drops already. Kind of a light brown, I'd say. Very important to keep scraping off of the sides because you don't want to be digging through here, running out of glass bedding to stick in your rifle. And the only thing you got left is unmixed hardener and resin. It doesn't have any color to it. This winds up looking like a swirly. We don't want that. We want a professional bed job. Say it's getting to be about the color. I might add just a drop more. Just one drop more because it's going to get dark real fast now. See that? Oh no, I've gotten it on me. That's to be expected. Swipe it back off. You should have a clock running in your head right now. You only get so long. pretty close. It's pretty close. I think it's going to work. It's going to work. What do you think? It's not the best video. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to start up here at the front, work our way back. We'll skip the load, and we'll come up here and work on the back end. So, let's clean off our stick. And start to apply. It looks mixed good. Okay. Start to apply glass bedding, just like this. Messy, messy. I don't have it too tight in the stock. I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit. Because I'm going to be moving it from this vise. Okay, the hole right here, I got a pack. No air bubbles. You want no air bubbles. So, whatever you got to do to fill it like that, push it down in there. Speed it over. You 
uniformly consistent. Making sure there's no air pockets in there. What you do is you expose the air pocket by pulling back with your stick and then you push forward and let this get sucked into the vacuum and it'll lay pretty nicely for you. Okay. Add in here. want to make sure that when we put the barreled action in here that it's going to make contact. So if you see any low spots you need to fill them in. Now you're not trying to fill the barrel channel. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no air pockets. And when you go to lay that action in here, it's going to squirt this stuff out. We know this. Okay, let's come back here in the back. Little spot here we need to do. Now you don't want to do the screw hole. See how I just did that? You don't want to do that. What I do is I just use Q-tips and pull it back out. You can do this way. You don't want glass bedding in that hole. You don't. You do want it everywhere else. Okay. Just keep working here. Now you're going to get back in here real good. And this is where all the, after it reads the recoil lug, this is where all the pressure gets transferred to. Now it's going to get tight around the magazine here because there's just very little room on either side and this stuff's pretty thick. So getting it in there is going to be a little bit of a trick without creating an air pocket. But we're going to give it a whirl. Let's see what we can do about it. Eh? Alright. Gonna start moving a little faster here. We'll put that in here. Try to drag it, drag it through the hole. box around the magazine is not of the utmost importance to glass bed it, but you want a nice tight fit. So do what you can. Remember no air pockets as you're doing them. I'm trying to using my stick and creating a vacuum to try to suck some of this stuff down in along the sides here. Okay. Now we gotta do our last little bit here and this is your recoil lug. Now you don't want to pack the very bottom of the recoil lug. You want to do that. 
Why? We have some tape, two pieces of masking tape on the very bottom of the recoil well. That's the piece of steel that sits down in here. The reason we did that is because we need a relief. It has to be somewhere for this to go. I was telling you we dug that channel out just in front of it. There's a reason for that. Looks like I do need just a little bit more to fill that void right there. Well, we might have just enough actually. Like I said, we want 100% glass bedding. I've got quite a bit of extra here. Right there, pack it up there. Remember, you want it on the sides. You want the wood to look like it grew onto this. And this stuff will flow, so as long as you get it over the hole, it'll go. As well as being squished out everywhere else when I lay this action in here. Okay. I think it looks like it's ready. Just make sure we have it right here on the end. I'm gonna I'm gonna pressure bed this and I wanna make sure that there's plenty of material here to, to lift following gravity. We'll go right where I want it to go. Okay, she's setting up, so let's do this. There's the tape right there. You also want to knock these edges down. By knocking them down, you want to take a file so that it's not nice and real sharp to shave any of this off once we're done or when we're sticking it together right now. So, excuse me. Here it comes. I gotta clean a hole real fast. Okay, I was clean and the glass on me. I'm gonna stick a bolt in here. And we want this barrel to action. Touch. It's touching the screw, so that's a good thing. There's that one. There we go. I'll move this off camera for just a second. Now, very quickly, I'm going to tighten these screws. adjust the magazine box. But that's okay. I can work on that after the fact. Right now I just want to make sure this is completely compressed in here.
Okay, now I said we have to do it with the magazine box. Let's do that. Get our tape, stick it to the side for just a moment. Trying just not to get this on my hands is why I'm being so cautious. That's going to glass bed together so nice. This is just so nice. I'm so happy that we're so nice. You don't want to put it on the stock, like I said before. This stuff will ruin finishes. So, as you can see, I've completely, sorry, I've completely taped this stock up. Except for the butt back here. As long as I'm careful, I won't need to do no more. So, looks like we had plenty of pressure bedding to ooze out everywhere, and that's good. That's what we want. You want it to ooze out. If you can see that, see how it oozed out everywhere? That's what you want. Now, what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to take this to the vise behind me, and I'm going to flip this upside down and clamp it. Clean the buttstock just to be triple careful. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to hang this upside down. We'll put a weight out here at the end. I'm going to clean it because you do need to do that. You need to move all this excess real fast before it starts to set up. That's why I taped the whole stock. It's because it's going to ooze, it's going to drip everywhere. You need to make sure you tape the whole stock. So I'm going to put it in the vise. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to put four to five pounds of weight out at the end of the barrel at the muzzle end. I'm going to put some tape on it so we don't mar our finish. And that's going to give us a pressure bed. And I'll see you when I come back to check it. Okay? Um, yeah, I'll do it when I crack the screws loose and then when I go to separate the action to show you the finished result. See you then. Okay, here uh, here we've cleaned off the excess, okay? We've taped the end of our muzzle and we've secured the back end of the rifle in the vise. This is going to set here for several hours. So we're going to grab our weight. And you don't want to lose the gun from the vise. If you drop it on the floor, scratch it up for your customer, it's going to be very nice. Tighten it up just a little bit there. Okay. Seems to be pretty stable. Now, like I said before, what this is doing is this is allowing the flow of the glass bed as it finds all its little nooks and crannies and places it wants to go and gets hard for us. We're creating a, a small gap right here. We're, we're slightly pulling the barrel away from the frame just as much as it will with having it screwed completely into the frame of uh, the stock. So there's going to be a little bit of flex there and we're going to use that to our advantage to pressure bed this stock. This is how the professionals do it and this is some of the tips and tricks most people don't know to do to get a, a truly professional and all your money's worth out of your glass bedding job. So now that this is like this, we're going to leave it cooked for a while to set up. We'll be back in about four, four and a half hours to crack the screws. Just crack them to make sure they come free because at that stage of the game, we really, if they don't come loose, we need to start getting them back out somehow because after it completely cures, we're going to have problems. So I'll crack them, I'll put that on video, and then when I come to remove it from the vise and separate the two, I'll show you how the glass bedding job turned out. Awesome. See you guys then. I'd like to apologize. Um, the first part of this video did not record. There was something wrong. None of the data was recorded. So you didn't get to see the removal of the action from the stock after the glass bedding gets set. And you didn't get to hear me talk about any of the techniques that I use for doing that, or see me do it, 
or when I removed the tape and then, you know, cleaned this up and, and dressed it, made it look like the wood and the metal had grown together. Um, so I'm just going to talk through and go through that and some of the tooling that I use. And then I have another rifle right here. A customer brought to us the other day. There, we are going to do the exact same job on. Um, this is a plastic synthetic stock. Uh, so, and it's another Remington 700. That's a Winchester. This is a Remington 700 uh, with a synthetic stock instead of wood. But we're going to do the exact same job over again and show you the result on that. So, hopefully, if the recording equipment works correctly, uh, you'll get to see me in action. Um, actually, making this look the way it looks right now. So, one of the things to talk about <clears throat> when the last part of recording that you did get to see was I had this chucked up in the vise behind me and it was all taped up and we had just applied the glass bedding and set the action in and screwed it down and then started cleaning up along the side here and around the front and around all the glass. Then we flipped it upside down and clamping this in a vise we put a weight at that end secured the rear end and put about five pounds on it. Now what this does is this your last receiver screw is right here. So from here to there, you've got quite a bit of leverage. If you remember your high school physics, you know, depending on where your fulcrum is, and that would be your point. Um, this is your whole lever. So if you put five pounds out here, it is going to lift this barrel just a little bit out of the out of the stock bed. What that's going to do is that's going to allow this glass bedding to flow and create just it's going to push, if you will, or suck. Uh, either way you want to do it, because when you lift the barrel up. It's going to pull glass bedding under it. More glass bedding than would normally be there should the barrel be at rest in the position that it's in with gravity and everything pulling that glass bedding down. And so what that gives you is a pressure bedded action. And the pressure being the added glass bedding that is uh, accumulated underneath the barrel and has set up for after you've removed the weight it will be held under there with a little bit of pressure and what that does is you've now made full contact with this action and this stock frame so there's going to be no shifting around of it plus now you have dampened dampened all of the harmonics from the barrel in this 300 Winchester uh, past this point where the stock ends uh, it, normally if you're just going to glass bed or free float your barrel you're, you're going to deal with a lot of harmonics past the end of the stock but pressure bedding it puts like a little dampener on it. it's a built in dampener and this greatly increases your accuracy looks good we've already gone over the three reasons of why to do it you know cosmetic strength and, and accuracy so to, to keep going with that after you've let this set up for about four hours Okay, pretend when I left the last video we're back and, and I'm going to show you how to separate this out. You need to, I told you not to throw this away, you're going to need this. And there's a reason for that. You're going to check this, and right now this is absolutely glass hard because of course I've completed the whole job now. And it's had time to set up just like in here. It, you want to check it with your popsicle stick here and make sure she's starting to set up good and firm. Like I said, about four to six hours and 70 degrees low humidity. And when it's like that is when you want to try to separate these two. And I wish I could show you exactly what I mean. And if you stick around, I'll show you exactly what I mean in the next mini video with the other rifle. But this stuff will be hard, but it will give just a little bit. And you want that because... You want it hard so that when you lift this action out of here, your glass bedding is, is, is laid. It's done. It's nice and smooth. It's full contact. But you want it soft because what you're going to do, I'm going to go over some tools here that you're going to use that you should have for your glass bed job. Other than your tape and your Vaseline and your plumber's putty, you, uh, you're going to use, I use... Automotive gasket scrapers, they're just as good as wood chisels. Um, I find I can control these just a little bit better because I'm used to them. You're going to separate this out of here and you're going to want to clean this back down from where it's all 
bubbled up from hanging upside down and it's hard enough, you know, it kind of looks like this. And you want it to look like that. So, in order to do that, if you can't get these two to separate, once you come in and crack your screws loose on the bottom, that's another point I need to make. Uh, after about four hours, you need to come in and crack your screws loose. Um, because you need to make sure that they're going to be this stuff still giving enough to get it broke loose. And once you break it loose and it's set up to that point, it's not going to it's not going to re-adhere. It's, it's done. So that you're going to be able to get the screws out. And that's number one. Number two is you've got all this tape and all of this stuff bubbled up over the receiver here. That's why you clean it up as best you can with a popsicle stick. But remember, we just had this thing upside down in a vise hanging for four hours. So some of it has come to. And it might be difficult to get these two separated. If you have not experienced a mechanical lock where the glass bedding has oozed up through one of these holes and went over top of the metal so it's like mechanically holding it down and you're going to have to break that glass at the at the point where the stock can come vertically out you don't want to run into that you want to clean it all up with your popsicle stick as best you can um, all that work then saves a lot of work later but if you don't have that experience where you have a mechanical lock and that's explained in the instructions of our glass once you get the kit uh, again so in case you forget what I'm saying and everything's going to release right and you can't get it out it's, it's not going to just lift out and I'll show you in a minute this one's separate from the stock and it's, it's not going to come out of there okay you know, it's not going to come out but when you're first done the job and it's not all cleaned up like this and been in and out a couple times it's going to be in there it's going to be stuck in there really well really well okay um, don't freak out what you want to do is you got two options here okay and I'll demonstrate the first one <clears throat> the first one is you'll find a nice padded bench like this this won't hurt the rifle at all you are going to bring the barrel down put your thumb in the back end of the receiver I hope you guys can see this put your thumb in the back end of the receiver and you're going to lift up as best you can because you need to bring this vertically out but you're going to break the hold between the two right up here where the barrel meets the receiver and you're going to bring it down flat not on an angle and not like this you're going to bring it down flat as best you can and it should pop it out just like that like I said this thing's pretty much a suction fit so she's tight the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to dry this out now I've already done it so it's just going to slide out but it is a very snug fit now with all the glass that's went around it and filled in the hole very snug fit now. It's good. We like that. Let me do one thing here. There we go. So, that's one option to get your action and stock separated after the application has set. You're going to bring it down just like I showed you. Now, option two, if it's really stuck in there and you didn't do your release agent correctly or you didn't do enough Vaseline where I told you to Vaseline at <clears throat> you need to stick it in a freezer refrigerator big enough if you can but you know it's gonna stick this whole gun in here and you're gonna leave it in there for a few hours uh, generally overnight's not warranted but if it's stuck real good overnight can only help and since the wood is basically an inert material and so is the glass material and the metal isn't. The metal will react to the cold. It will shrink. It will break it for you. It'll break the seal between the two. And that'll help you once it's once it's done that and it's ice cold, take it out of the deep freezer, do the same thing I just showed you. Whack, whack, and it should separate just the way you've seen right there. It'll it'll do a nice lift out. As you can see here in this stock, I've already drilled the two holes to put the two swing swivel options back in. And so if he wants to put a bipod or something here later, he can clearly access those holes. It does not hurt the glass bedding or the pressure bed at all. Because as you can see, there's a good two to three inches right here that is full contact. This is full 
contact all the way around here. The recoil lug's been beefed up. Magwell's all beefed up around the action here where the bolt cycles. Back here on both wings, it's filled up with glass and looks great. And you can see here the rear tang is squared off now versus the stock was round. And so you have full contact back here as well. So nothing's shifting around in here. This gun's going to be super accurate. Another tool you're going to want to use is a file. If you get these two separated, you're going to want to leave it in the vise. Okay, so you can get the top part exposed. And generally, you're going to put it in a vise as such. So this is my vise and it's clamped here. Okay, where I can take a file or the, the gasket scraper. And you're just ever so lightly going to come over here and, and start trimming this. This stuff should peel kind of like thick tar paper. Not on pudding. Like I said, you want to check. I'll show you in the next video the, how hard you want it to be when you start this procedure. Sticking it in the refrigerator is going to gum it up a little more. Think of like a real hard gummy bear. Okay. You can cut it. Or silicone, if you will. Silicone that is set up. And you got... No, silicone's too hard. I'm sorry for that analogy. I would say a hard gummy bear. <laughs> okay. And you're going to cut. And you're always going to move. If it's real gummy, you're always going to move to the outside of the stock so that it doesn't peel away and ruin the job. And you're going to have to fix it. So you always want to cut to the outside. Try to run straight, long lines. The tape is going to help guide you and protect you. You know, you're not digging. You're just kind of shearing off the top here and making it nice and flat and a nice cut edge. Once you get that down as far as you can, and you, and you know, you got to do the whole receiver. All, you know, it's all taped up. You've seen it before. Once you get that done, you can let it harden up just a little bit more. At least I do. This is one of my techniques from my experience of doing this. I'll let it harden up just quite a bit. Quite a bit more, almost to this right here, pretty much. Uh, I find it's easier to work with in this fashion with a file like that than it does any other way. Now, what I'll do in the vise, just like this, I will take, and you want a short stroke, because you don't want to cut both sides of this at one time. You don't want to do that. Uh, the stock may be off just a little bit. It is wood. So you don't want to start filing into the past the tape and into the wood and getting your sides off. So you're just going to take short strokes. Um, if you want to go more diagonal, you can, but you're going to guide it with your bottom fingers and the pressure is going to be here on your thumb, not out here on your hand. It's just holding the balance. Let me try to swap that over so you can see there. How about that? You're just holding the tail end of this and your thumb is doing all the work with the file. And that will bring it down very slow and make it very smooth. And you'll be able to stop just with the tape when the tape becomes exposed and you start scuffing. And that's very nice. That, that works out very good with the tail. Now peel all your tape off. Clean your stock off. Clean your Vaseline out. Clean all your release agent off of your action. And out of here because there's going to be blue chunks of stuff stuck in here. Um, clean that all out. Then you're going to have to get all your putty out of all your holes. However you got to do that. Sometimes glass will form over the top, so you've got to rake it back out. In the trigger area back here, you will, you'll you probably have to drill it out, you know, get a puncture hole. You've seen I filled it with putty, but then I laid glass over top of that, and then on the action I filled with putty and jammed the two together, so this is all filled. So you're going to have to bust through that glass and, and channel that hole back out and make sure there's nothing wrong with the functionality of the trigger or the safety or the bolt removal, um, the bolt takedown right here. Um, none of that. <clears throat> you're also going to have to clean off uh, for any bolts that you didn't get stuck in, like this third one here. I had to clean all this glass back out of the hole in order to get the bolts back in. And clean out all the release agent. Drill your holes. Like I said, this was completely glassed, so I had to pull out all my putty and get a real small drill bit. Drill this way to find the holes and then invert and start drilling this way with in increasingly larger drill bit diameters until I was able to fit the nut and the socket in there. Now I did grind down the socket. Actually, I put it on the lathe to the smallest possible diameter that I was able to, 
to use it in this hole and then I greased it on top of that so it was a nice snug fit and I didn't have to remove any more glass material than I had to a regular socket's not going to fit in there okay that's one thing I'm going to have to tell him uh, but I, I won't charge him to to remove an action and, and change out a stud for a, for a bipod or something I won't charge him for that uh, or I can just tell him simply get yourself a 3-8 socket and start grinding on it until it fits in the hole it's just something you want to do to keep the full strength of the glass bed in. So then you want to clean off all your other components, um, your trigger guard, everything that you put release agent on. We frog lubed everything while it was completely apart, completely cleaned the bore and everything. And then we reassembled it, and it was the final product that you've seen here. Um, again, one of the other tools we used when we were doing a lot of Dremel tooling, and that's removing all that air, that air glass from the control areas of the action is we made this little dummy stick here it's just a stick of steel it can be round it can be square whatever there's a piece of scrap head lying around and I welded just a quarter inch bolt on it it fits these holes right here perfectly in, in most Remington 700s and 300s and 22 250s and, and all kinds of other action stocks that fit that platform of the Remington 700 um, and then you'll just get a little washer and a bushing and a nut and what that does is it allows you to purchase a better grip on this and work on it in a vise by simply, and it's tight. You probably got to screw it in and out. You know, like I said, there's there's glass bits. This thing don't move. Even the screws are tight now. Okay, push it up in there. You'll put your bushing and your nut on it you'll lock that down and then you'll be able to hold this action by this stick and you'll be able to have more control over where you're working with your dremel tools and your files and your scrapers uh, in order to remove all that extra glass bedding and everything um, very handy tool versus having it clamped in a vise all the time especially after you've removed the tape and you don't want to have to retape it again you can just use this handle right here and it works fine you don't have to worry about putting excess pressure or anything on it. It'll be fine. So you'll clean that all up. And then if you do happen to gouge the stock with one of your knives or when you're filing it down, you get a little bit too much, it's okay. If you don't go too deep, just, just put a little bit of clear coat or stain in that area first and then a little bit of clear coat and it should be just fine. It'll blend right back in. Um, if you get good like me, that won't happen. So. Uh, you won't have to, have to worry about that too much. Those are uh, skills that novices get good at for a little while, and as you get to become better at it, you don't have to remember how to hide your mess ups because you just quit messing up, uh, and that always turns out real nice for the customer. So, again, I will include uh, some closer up detailed pictures with my iPhone since it has a better camera on it and I can control it better, and. We will shoot the video on this other stock, hopefully start to finish for you. I apologize for the missing pieces of this stock. Uh, we also have a, a couple small places here you'll see in the close-up videos. The idiest bittiest place, you, you, you probably won't even see it unless I point it out, to, to repair and then one little bubble got over here. And to do that, we're just going to take a Dremel tool with a drum on it, sand it out just a, touch, just a little bit and we're going to make up just a couple of drops of, of glass and turn it the same color and fill the hole put just a dab or two a release agent on the action here where where those pieces are reset it come back in tomorrow and uh, clean up just them two spots of course we'll have to retake but just in them two spots it, it won't be very bad uh, very clean and, and it'll look professional when done they won't be there um, so if you have any questions uh, go ahead and contact us at sales at metalgeararmory.com. You can hit us through a contact page on our website at metalgeararmory.com. We are going to do a new thing here where I'm going to offer, if you want your rifle done, something we're, we're doing to your handgun or your rifle or something, some crazy idea that you want jammed together, uh, we'll shoot a video on it uh, from start to finish so you can see how and what we're doing and the thought process and we'll post that on YouTube for you so any firearms that come in here uh, if it's your own firearm and, and you want to see okay it won't be live action what we're doing to it of course it'll always be after the fact I've shot the video and compiled it and put it all together in pieces but I, I can shoot 
you know, we can agree on, you know, how you want to see the really tedious stuff. And I'll have to have somebody show me how to fast forward through my movements so I'm moving like I'm on crack here or something. <clears throat> to get through the real tedious spots so you can see exactly what I'm doing to your firearm. And if anybody else wants to do that, there's exactly what they have to do to do it. Granted, if they have all the equipment and whatever. So that's going to be a new segment that we have along with the review table that's coming. We're going to review our own products. And if you have tried something and had a problem, um, let us know. We'll, we'll try that equipment out too and, and see what happens. And we'll post. Uh, we're going to try to do a weekly one. So again, just to recap, if you, if you want your firearm uh, serviced by us, whatever it is, short in the barrel, pin, well, rechambered, glass bedded, trigger job, uh, whatever you want done to it. We're going to take an AK-47 and a Remington 700 and jam the two together and make something awesome out of it and make it look nice. We'll shoot a video on that for you and show you exactly how we built your gun. And we'll post it here on YouTube. You can, we'll give you a link and, and a way to download it, or we'll just send it to you in an email, how to, uh, a video of it, and uh, we'll have that going as well for all you people out there and the four subscribers that I have during the timing of this video. So I thank you again, sales at metalgeararmory.com or metalgeararmory.com for all our ser services and the shop, and we have a contact page there. And if it isn't on my website, drop me a line. There's tons and tons of stuff that I can get that isn't on my website, as well as uh, uh, questions I can answer about your own firearms. And maybe you can fix it yourself with a little bit of our guidance, and maybe you can't, you know, because of liability reasons. I'm not going to tell you how to do a trigger job, but I can tell you, you know, if it's a magazine or if it needs to come into us for, for looking at, we'll see what happens. Uh, just drop us a line. So thank you, and stay tuned. We'll have another video up here shortly. Okay, <clears throat> this is a close-up view, real quick. The finished stock work. You can see we've got pretty good contact, actually 100% contact between the receiver. Everywhere you see glass bedding is where it did not have contact. You can see here we filled up the back end. And quite a significant portion of where the recoil lug was in this stock. Nice lines here, nice lines here. Drilled out the holes for the sling swivels. Nice lines here. Coming all the way around. Nice sharp line here. Matches the color of the stock very well. And as you'll see, I've got just a couple of little blemishes that I'll have to come back and fix. There's one there and there. See it? I can come back and fix that with just a little bit of glass. No problem. But with it, the assembly in here, you can't even see it. Okay, and if you remember, this was rounded back here and the, the action is squared off. So you can see the bedding filled all out of that as well. The side looked like now we installed the steel to hide all this glass bedding can't see that anymore continue with the rest here in just a moment just wanted to give a close-up of the action in the stock so that you can see how close the glass bedding got everywhere that it went. And you can see a nice uniform <clears throat> down both sides of the barrel. Look at that. That's a perfect job. You can barely see it right there, but you can see it. Blends in very nice with the wood grain. Fills in the gaps very nicely looks like the metal and the wood are one piece only down the side there's that blemish we need to take care of very nicely done